Welcome to another episode of the Nostalgia Podcast. My name is Matt Fulton. I'm your host and also creator of the website Nostalgia.com, which is a website based on the Australian pop culture landscape, I guess you could call it, uh, covering Australian music, TV, movies and other bits in between. This latest edition of the Nostalgia Podcast, I am talking to Scott McRae. You may know him from the host of Video, as well as popping up on E Street, which was his first step into the Australian team. TV industry. Uh, he's a very talented guy, very passionate musician, as well as into the Australian theatre. Um, uh, no spoilers here, but he does talk about the theatre a fair bit. But um, Scott is a great guy and he's very friendly. So, so yeah, so if you want to know how Vidiot came about and other bits and pieces that he has been part of, feel free to listen to this edition of the Nostalgia Podcast. We'll see you on the other side. <laughs> I'm joined by Scott McRae, who has an extensive background in TV, radio, music, everything, uh, movies as well. Um, well, first of all, hello, Scott. Hey, buddy. How are you, Matt? I am great. But how are you, more importantly? Like, what are you up to these days? Oh, mate, right at the moment, I'm um, still working on a travel show. So I've been, I sort of fell into the world of travel shows about. 10 years ago on the side of doing my other stuff with music and whatnot. And I, um, I've i been uh, just got back from Canada. And, uh, it's a Channel 10 show. It's called A Taste of Travel. And it's on Saturday afternoons, and I think they replay it. And, of course, you can always watch it on, on 10 Play and, and whatnot. Um, but basically, it's just travel around the world, mate, with this one. And, you know, a bit like Getaway, that type of show, and show people around the place and hopefully get them interested in travelling uh, around the, the planet, and of course in Australia as well. This is the best country in the world. Oh, naturally. Uh, of course it is, I can <laughs> say that. Um, but yeah, I've been doing that and uh, a bit of music stuff. I've got a couple of bands going, and I also have a show about uh, Stevie Wright and the Easy Beats, which I don't know if it's before your time, mate, but um, the Easy Beats were, of course, one of Australia's biggest ever bands, and they uh, they paved the way for international recognition for Australian music, really. And uh, Stevie Wright, well, he had a, a checkered career, but he was um, much loved by many people. So, um, yeah, we've been touring that around the country the last four, four or five years and got a few more shows to do this year. Were you always into music or did you, just, you know, hop straight into your acting or... Well, what came first? Matt, I was actually a muso. I was playing drums at the age of 11, uh, if you can call that a muso. Some people... Uh, tend to disagree that drummer's actually a musician. Yeah. Um, that's a, one of those good music jokes. And, uh, mate, I've, I've been into music before I got into acting. Actually, the reason I went to acting school was because I got sick of bands breaking up. So, um, you know, I, I said, well, I'm going to go and do something where I just rely on myself. And, and uh, you know, I always had a bit of the gift of the gab and I enjoyed uh, doing a little bit of acting at school. So I went, uh, went to Sydney Acting School and did a three-year course there and, and I came out and I think I did a, an episode on GP, a show called GP on the ABC, and then signed up to do um, E Street for a couple of years. Uh, was that your first step up uh, into yeah, the whole acting yeah, that, part? That was, my, um, that was my introduction to the, the uh, industry, I guess, um, on E Street and, and working with cameras. Of course, the, the, tra- the acting school I went to was mainly based on theatre orientated. So, you know, it was. Um, it was a bit different to come into a, a sh- working with cameras and work out how that all works, but uh, it was exciting all the same. Of course, it was at the time it was probably the biggest show on TV, and I was lucky enough to join the cast, so that was good. Yeah, well, E Street was huge, and uh, can you explain, if you can remember, um, what a day in filming E Street was like? Well, uh, the, the way it used to run was it was all broken up into blocks, so um, you do. Sometimes you'd be working on two episodes at once. Um, you might be working on the location stuff of an episode ahead of the other one, and the studio stuff would be the episode before that. Um, and you, depending on how much you were doing in those episodes or how many scenes you had, you'd usually come into the studio or onto the location, and you know you'd film. They'd try and film as many as they could with you involved, obviously, in one day to save you coming in and out and. It was also better for them because you get the filming done. So you know you, you might have say fourteen scenes in a in an episode, and you probably maybe shoot those over two or three days. Um, sometimes you'd be there all week and and just shoot a few a day, but that that was uh, never the 
the best way to go about it. They, they always try to get you in there and, and, you know, lock it all into one sort of situation. But, you know, just learn your lines, mate, know your role, get your spot and away you go. And did you uh, keep any of your episodes that you're in? <laughs> you know, I don't actually have any episodes. I have a few little pieces. Um, a friend of mine bought some, um, like a DVD that, had the I think it was the best of E Street or Mr Bad or something I don't know and they gave me a copy of that so I do have some of that stuff but yeah I, I don't actually have any episodes myself my mum actually does like she she recorded a few and she's still got the old VHS so mum's got some uh, maybe I'll have a look at them one day and have a laugh mate there's nothing wrong with self indulgence with that okay. <laughs> Every, and they need to release more of it, but yeah, they've only got the volume one and two of the Mr. Bad thing. Yeah. Was it 400 yeah. odd episodes? Uh, yeah, 432 from memory. Wow. Yeah, so there was a few. I was probably only in, oh, I think 200 and maybe 280. I'm, I can't really remember off the top of my head. Uh, it was only a couple. You'll be fine. Yeah, there's a few there to pick from. Yeah. Um, so you went from E Street to or well, hosting Vidiot, which was a uh, a kids' game show based on pop culture, TV, and other bits and pieces on the ABC. Uh, but you, but the, f- the first host was Eden Kahar, but you took over Eden's role. And yeah, you... well, it's, it's funny because I actually did East, uh, did a thing called Cat, the musical, straight after E Street. Oh, okay. Well, I toured Australasia doing that, so Australia and then over to Singapore and Hong Kong. Um, and then I was actually overseas and, and Eden rang me and told me that he was leaving. And he said, mate, you'd be perfect this job. And I said, well, I've never hosted anything. I, I don't, wouldn't know what to do. And he goes, mate, I'm telling you, you'd be great at it. Just, just um, you know, get your agent onto it and get yourself an audition. And, and that's how that came about. Now, was that a lot of fun to do? Because I do remember watching that, and it was always a dream to be on, you know, as a oh, yeah. contestant. And you just made it a lot of fun, mate. I had a ball. I loved. I loved that setup. It was a great show. Um, I cringe at some of the clothes I used to wear, but you know, I never picked those, so that didn't <laughs> you know, come come down to my personal choice. But uh, yeah, look, great times. Met a lot of good people that I still sort of keep connected with, one way or the other, because. As you know, every show we used to have a um, a celebrity guest and I became friends with a few of those people and, you know, you run into them here and there and it's uh, it's always good to catch up. But, yeah, it was a great show. It was a great crew that worked on that. The ABC were really good people to work for. Um, you know, there should be something like it on, on TV now. I, there's nothing for that age group, you know, that they're all too busy you know, YouTubing and everything else. And um, it was aimed really at the 14 to 15-year-olds and, and even though... You know, I knew plenty of adults that used to watch it. Um, it was just a great fun show. And, uh, yeah, it, it used to rate really well. I mean, we got nominated for Logies a couple of years and um, never won one, unfortunately. I'll, the the walk, talking bath mat aggro used to always beat us. <laughs> for some reason, I have no idea. But, anyway, he was a funny bugger. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, it was it was good times, mate. I look, I look back at the... At the video era, those couple of years, I did that very fondly. You stayed with the ABC for a bit because you also did uh, you did pop up in the Ferals. Yeah, yeah, did a couple of little guesties at the Ferals, and um, yeah, that was always fun. They're, they're once again, you know, good people. That Kylie Hoggett was um, gorgeous, and uh, Miguel Esther and and uh, Brian Rooney was a good buddy of mine. We were the same agent for years, and um, we we're actually mates, so really good mates. So. Um, that was fun, yeah. That was that was good, tough, fun times. ABC was a good place. Yeah, and you've uh, dabbled some in some acting as well, such as uh, in you know in Sea Patrol, All Saints, Water Rats. Uh, now, what what would be the highlight of your career? Um, I know it's I'm putting you on the spot there, but out of what what would be the most fun part of? Um... Oh, look, you know what? Cats was probably um, the biggest challenge because you know there was dancing involved as well as singing and. Uh, you had to do your own makeup, and it was a you know a big big show at the time, and that was a great challenge, and I had a really good time doing that. Um, Video being my first uh, you know quiz show type thing or hosting got job was was great too. But you know, mate, I've been lucky. You know, or, you know, you, you create a lot of your own work, but I've been lucky in the fact that I've managed to be around still twenty five years later, and um, I got so many great memories. You know. 
probably one of my greatest uh, achievements, I would say. Um, one that I enjoyed the most was the, the show that I co-wrote and I've been touring of Stevie because it was, you know, it's basically your baby and when it's your baby, it's, it means a lot more to you. And when you see, you know, an audience get up and give you a standing ovation at every show, it's that's pretty special. That's um, That sort of stuff stays with you. Uh, you know, in a in a big way. So music is definitely in your blood. That's your your baby, the, the core of your persona in a way. Yeah, look, I love music. I love music. I like I like theatre too. I like I like something that's live. You know, you have got one chance at it really, and you um, if you if you blow it, then you know you're not going to get a second chance. TV a lot of the time, you could um, you know have another shot at it, which. Yeah, it was always good to know you had it there, I guess. But, uh, yeah, it wasn't uh, – I, I like that uh, thrill and that excitement of theatre to the point where your adrenaline's running and, you know, you know you've got to nail it. That's that's always a great feeling. Is there always that pressure in theatre because you are seeing various people every single show knowing that each person will be different and you've got to have to make that perf- performance fresh every single time? Yeah, well, you've got to try and do that, I guess. You know, you, you don't want to be um, giving anybody a, a lacklustre effort and you've, you've always got to be on your on your game. And remember, most of those times you've got other cast members with you who have to be in the same mode as well because um, it's a team effort definitely doing ensemble pieces in theatre and you've got to really rely on each other and, and yourself as much as, uh, you know, your, your crew, um, your stage crew and your, your, your uh, stage manager and lighting operators and all that sort of thing. So, yeah, it's a, it's, um, a lot more to it than, than meets the eye. And uh, any advice on anyone who is trying to get themselves into the career of theatre or TV at all? Yeah, get yourself a real job first. Make sure you've got something to fall back on because it's, it's a tough game and um, you don't want to be driving cabs and waiting on tables all the time. So maybe get yourself a real job. My, my dad wouldn't let me... Um, I was actually going to go off and play in a band in Queensland, do a, a tour when I was about 17, and he told me there's no way I was doing it and that um, if I went and got a trade, then I could do whatever the hell I wanted, was his words. Uh. So I went and became a floor and wall tiler by trade and then put myself through acting school at the same time, um, at nights, weekends, that sort of thing, and then I took it from there. So, you know, if I ever get a real dead spot in my career, which... Touch wood, it doesn't happen that often. I just get my tools out and go and tile a bathroom or two or, you know, a kitchen or something like that. And it's always good too to, when you're doing your own house renos, you've got to, you know, something up your sleeve. Yeah, so you always should have a paid hobby in your side pocket. I believe so. That's, that's uh, one of the things I think everyone should have if you're uh, thinking about dabbling in this business. Scott McRae, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate being on the podcast. Mate, very much enjoyed it, buddy. Uh, you take care and don't forget, folks, get out there and tune into Channel 10 Saturday afternoons, 4.30. I know it's a crazy time, but, you know, give yourself a rest in the afternoon and watch a taste of travel and I'll say day. Excellent. Thank you so much, Scott. All the best, Matt. Well, that wraps up another episode of the Nostalgia Podcast. Thank you so much, Scott, for being a great sport and having a nice chat. And if you want to know more about what his projects are, past, present and future, go to scottmcrae.com.au where all the information is there. And, uh, yeah, as he said, watch his show on Channel 10. Anyway, thank you for downloading and listening to this podcast. I really appreciate it. Feel free to send me some feedback. If you shoot me an email, ozstalgia at gmail.com or check the account out on Twitter and on Facebook. Feel free to give us a bit of a like. But make sure you stay subscribed to the podcast because there'll be more interviews down the track. We've got a few lined up. And make sure you visit nostalgia.com. Appreciate it. Anyway, I'll see you in the next podcast. Ciao.